Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Drunk Agile. You can't see it, but Nisha kind of wandered off camera. There she is. Just trying to, trying to hide. Hey, Nisha. Um, unfortunately, you have to look at Pratik and not Nisha, but Pratik is here as well. Hi, Pratik. Uh, okay. My name is Daniel Vacanti. Um, Pratik, what are you drinking? Good to start it off. What are you drinking? Uh, I've got the Glengarry that uh, Dan and I went to the Glengarry distillery and bottled this ourselves. Uh, it's sherry. It's super sherry based on that color, as you can see. It's Christmas and uh, fifty eight point three percent. Yeah, cool. That's where we are today. Uh, I'm I'm black to the to the uh, Blair Athol twelve year fifty nine point eight uh, bourbon cask. Um, we were talking about this earlier. I'm kind of kind of off the sherried whiskeys lately. I don't, you know, and and it's it's actually really really. I'm finding it harder and harder and harder to find just a straight bourbon cask uh, yeah, whiskey. So anyway. Uh, Maybe in the one of the next episodes, I'll. Well, I picked up a, a slightly different kind of sherry cask, which has which is sherry but less sherry. <laughs> so maybe you gotta try that at some point. Go oh, try anyway. Okay. Tonight's episode or today's episode, wherever you are, um, we 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 we've, we've been getting a lot of comments lately, and we've kind of skirted this issue a lot in the past and we've never really kind of hit it head on. And uh, this is the idea of variation in data. What is it and why should you care? This episode will just be, I think a very, very basic, very basic introduction to this. My guess is this will lead to several follow on um, episodes, but you can't understand flow unless you understand variation. So um, Pratik, do you want to start us off? What is what is variation? Yeah, uh, I, I this is where I get confused because I don't know how to keep this basic. So let's 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 try <laughs> this. <laughs> let's try this. Um, the 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 easiest way I can think of explaining variation is uh, whenever you and, and we were talking just talking about this. Whenever you try to measure something or. Uh, quote unquote, estimate something, uh, you will, when, when you're measuring something, you will, there will be some natural, uh, I can't think of another word than variability in that measurement. Uh, that measurement will not exactly be the same yeah. every time. Yeah, na um, natural differences maybe, just differences yeah, in every every observation. Every measurement, yeah. yeah. And and that, that, those differences, that the fact that um, driving from point A to point B is not always exactly the same. That's variability. Sometimes it takes a little longer, sometimes it takes a little less. That 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 is variability. Yeah, um, we were talking about, uh, about this. I was trying to find trying to find a reference for it, but you know, if there are any scientists out there, you, you probably know this, or anybody with a science background. Even even like the ultimate constant in the universe, which is the <laughs> speed of light, right? There's actually not really, I mean, there, there is an agreed speed of light, but if you were to go measure and set up an experiment to measure speed of light yourself, you would get a different value than what is the generally agreed one. And that's how they come, kind of come up with the generally agreed ones because they've got all these different observations and somehow, I hope it's not an average, but maybe it might be, um, somehow they, they they come up with what that is. And so it is perfectly normal when you are, when you're measuring your process, like Pratik said, when you're measuring drive time to work, when you're measuring how long it takes you to get coffee at Starbucks, when you're measuring the speed of light, every time you take a measurement, every time you take an observation, there is going to be differences in, in those things, right? Okay, so, so what, Pratik? So, right, so, so what? Yeah, yeah. and, and, uh, well, in in our work, in in knowledge work, um, I, I would I would even argue that 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 those differences, that variability, is magnified, um, definitely a lot more than the speed of light variability. It's 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 even more because we're our our stuff changes and and sure we can control it, but but things things a lot of things can affect the way we do these things. And um, for example, you might say that this particular thing will take me three days to do, or in the course of these 14 days, I'll get 10 things done. Um, either of those things can very easily be different regardless of how good you are at quote unquote estimating. 
that uh, this thing would take three days or I can get 10 things done. So those, those 10 things could end up being 12, they could end up being eight. Uh, it, it could be any of those things. Um, variability shows up with almost every time we try to measure cycle time, try to try to measure throughput, any of those things. Nope. Bottom line, every, every data set, and I think we can say this, every data set, and I'm gonna challenge, maybe we'll challenge our viewers to come up with a, an exception to this, but every data set that you come across will exhibit some type of this variation that is just the natural intrinsic part of the process. It's part, part of measurement, part of observation, just part, part of nature. It is, it is in, this idea of variation is intrinsic to nature. Every data set that you come across. Uh, we'll have that. So the question then becomes, if we if we are to expect differences in all of our observations, differences in all of our measurements, then how do we know um, how do we know how much difference is too much? How do we know that, hey, maybe we've come across something that we've never seen before, that this truly is exceptional? Uh, and not routine and and part of our process. I mean that that I think that's that's kind of job number one when you're looking at any data set. That that's job number one is to to analyze it for that. Yeah, uh, at, at what caused this variability to be greater than we should have expected, and even before we find that out, how much variability should we expect? Um, and that's that's where we will refer to. Uh, to, to the people we always refer to. We will refer to people like Sheward and Dr. Wheeler and all those folks to try and understand um, how much variability is too much variability. Yep, yes. At some point we will get to the, uh, I don't know how deep we'll get into the maths. Maybe we will get deep into the maths, um, but certainly you know, we'll get, get Sheward's take on how to decide how much variability is, how much variation in your data is, is too much. Um, and it's probably like most of the things we talk about, it's probably not what you've seen before. It's probably not what you've been taught. It's probably something, you know, uh, some, something completely different and you'll kind of have to for, for, forget all of that. So look for all of that stuff in, uh, in a future episode, but just know when we get to that, um, before we get to that, the basic premise is that variation is, is going to exist and you can't be upset <laughs> when it happens, right? When when you see it, you can't necessarily um, respond to to every little thing that says, "Oh, this is different." So um, so there's there's a problem here. I don't know. Should we get in? Should we get into the two mistakes, or should we save that for another? I think we should save that. Okay. I think we should save that. Yeah, yeah. Just let's just tease people with it. There are two mistakes. <laughs> <We'll talk> about... <laughs> and if you've been listening, you can probably pretty easily figure out what those two mistakes are. Um, so, any, so anything anything else on just our, I mean, we are really, really high level hand wavy yeah, here and, yeah, and yeah, it's on yeah. purpose, right? Because right, baby steps. Yeah, I, I, I was, uh, just the, 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 the example popped in my head. So I'll say it, it's like, if you ask someone, how, how heavy is a German Shepherd? There is no one single answer. You weigh all the German Shepherds and they will all weigh different. Um, and that, that's very building. That itself is very good. Now, sometimes a German Shepherd might be overweight because it's too lazy and you know doesn't move, or could be underweight. That we need to find out what tells us whether that German Shepherd is overweight or underweight. How, or, how is that? Yeah, it could be the owner that's negligent. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I'm just kind of throwing that out there too. That that could be that could be a reason too. Um, yeah, that, that you look how active. Yep. <laughs> um and we, what, one one other thing we should probably nip in the bud uh of, most of you're probably talking thinking you know normal distributions and things like that that's that's all bs as well forget about normally distributed forget about any any distributed data but um we've already got a video on that but we'll probably revisit some of those topics in the future one okay so um any any other final word while we we wrap this up and this kind of hand wavy maybe not so yeah good. yeah yeah this is this is just very high level, more to come, and and um, you'll you you'll you'll probably see a deeper dive into this soon. Yeah. All right. So um, for Nisha there in the in the background, although I think I think she she's she's healthy. I think she's healthy. Yeah. Right yeah, yeah. 
Um, so for Nisha, for Pratik, my name is Daniel Vacanti. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next episode.